they hear him. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Now can I get to the yams? Sweet, sweet yams, show me the way, cause I got bills to pay. Oh man, I'm on a good one. What's up with it fam? It's Hot Boxing Minute, your favorite pharmaceutical engineer turned boxing analyst, back at you with the realness, and you know we got a hell of a lot of boxing this weekend, so let's get it started. I'm going to try to take on as many of these big cards as I can as the week progresses, we're going to talk about what is going on this weekend at Madison Square Garden, New York City. The return of the takeover, Tiafimo Lopez. As he continues his campaign in the 140-pound division, he is facing Sandor Martin, the fighting pride of Catalonia, España, El Orgullo de Catalonia. Man, what a fun mashup. Um, Tiafimo Lopez was the 135-pound dude. We all know Tiafimo Lopez's story, y'all. The dynamic, athletic dude that was doing the the dances after the the knocking people out left and right. He was doing the Fortnite dances, and then Tiafimo Lopez, who was the former unified lightweight champion of the world, encounters George Cambosis Jr. upon a fight event. What was this? Twenty twenty one, last year, and he gets pretty beat up, beat up pretty badly. And we've kind of just seen the Tiafimo Lopez story kind of take a side detour, so to speak. He claimed he had that fluid in his lungs during the fight. His mindset just wasn't there. They didn't have Joey Gamash in the corner like they did during the Lomachenko fight, which was arguably Tiafimo Lopez's greatest achievement. His dad was acting all kind of strange in the post-fight in the ring after George Cambosis Jr. beat his son. So strange, but Tiafimo Lopez has said he's not doing 135 anymore. He moved up to the 140-pound junior welterweight division. His last fight was against Pedro Campa, a relatively unknown journeyman in the 140-pound division who had only fought, I think, one time outside of Mexico leading up to that fight with Tiafimo Lopez. It was an unusual fight because Tiafimo Lopez in that fight with Pedro Campa did get the seventh-round knockout. So... You know, it's odd with Tiafimo Lopez because he did fight Pedro Campa in his last fight. And although he did get a seventh round TKO stoppage win, he still received a lot of criticism for his performance against Pedro Campa. Many people felt it was kind of flat or it was missing something, that that dynamic Tiafimo Lopez experience. And I don't really know how to describe it any other way than that. It was just kind of a flat performance despite the knockout, you know, um... It seemed like he was having trouble adjusting to the 140-pound weight division, if that makes sense. He was watching his power as he was hitting Pedro Campa, and I think there were certain parts of it in the early part of the fight where he kind of got to a point where he realized that he wasn't going to have the same kind of one-punch stopping power like he does in the 135-pound weight division, because in that division, he was just blowing everyone out of the park. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see you know, that knockout of Richard Comey. Brilliant stuff. Um, he eventually settled down into his rhythm against Pedro Coppin in the seventh round, got the TKO stoppage, and he'll be fighting Sandor Martin this coming Saturday in Madison Square Garden. Now, they both have roughly the same dimensions, five foot seven and a half. I think Sandor Martin has, you know, and a half inch of reach, but Sandor Martin is a southpaw. That didn't seem to stop Tiafimo Lopez from beating Lomachenko, but yeah. Sandor Martins over record Sandor Martins overall record is 40 and 2 with 13 knockouts. His last fight was against Jose Felix Jr. out there in Spain somewhere, Barcelona if I'm not mistaken. But before that, before that, Sandor Martins crowning achievement. Now Sandor Martin, El Orgullo de Catalonia, España, the fighting pride of Spain. He's going to be fighting Tiafimo Lopez. And everybody knows Sandor Martin from beating the four division champion Mikey Garcia out there in Fresno last year. It was a crazy sight to witness. Sandor Martin clearly is not a person you want to underestimate in the ring. So hopefully Tiafimo Lopez is not taking this dude, you know, for granted at all. They had a face-to-face -to today in New York City, and it was kind of strange, to say the least. 
how do I say it after that face-to-face with Sandor Martin? It looked like Teofibo Lopez didn't, doesn't have Sandor Martin as shook as he would like to have him. Uh, Sandor Martin looked very, very focused. And I got to say this about Teofimo Lopez. Mentally, I'm stuck on the vision of what he was in the lightweight division leading up to that amazing, stunning win over Vasil Lomachenko. But it, see, it really feels like we haven't seen that Teofimo Lopez since he styled on Lomachenko. He got that loss to George Cambosis Jr. And he's acted a bit aloof in recent press interviews. He still hasn't taken accountability for that loss to George Cambosis Jr., And apparently they're not taking any outside trainer assistance for this fight with Sandor Martin. Now, Sandor Martin has already established he is not here for play. He is coming to win. Sandor Martin is a southpaw. He's a boxer, boxer, very textbook, great footwork. He moves in, he moves out. He throws combinations in bunches. I would say as far as his ability to throw combinations, it might be just as fast, if not faster than Tiafimo Lopez, but he doesn't quite have that same snappy pop that Tiafimo Lopez does. He's definitely a very traditional southpaw boxer, boxer going up against Tiafimo Lopez, who was kind of a freakishly athletic puncher with boxer features. Uh, Tiafimo Lopez is currently net ranked number one in the WBO rankings. Sandro Martin is ranked number sixth in the WBO rankings. They are both competing for that mandatory title shot against Josh Taylor, who holds the WBO belt. Josh Taylor has pretty much vacated all of his other belts. I don't think there is an IBF 140 champion. The other two champions are Alberto Puello with the WBA and the WBC, recently acquired by Regis Progress. Uh, Josh Taylor does have the ring belt, so he has the ring in the WBO. How he fares against the winner of this fight, Tiafimo Lopez or Sandor Martin, that depends on the performance of Tiafimo and Sandor, and that also depends on how Josh Taylor looks against Jake Cattrall. Interesting movements ebbing and flowing in the junior welterweight 140-pound division. Um, you know, Sandor Martin... He got that 10-round decision win against Mikey Garcia. He did lose in 2017 to Anthony Yigit, the dude that got that unusual loss to, you know, the new face of Mayweather Boxing, <laughs> Roly Romero. Uh, as far as I know, Roly Romero is still with Mayweather Promotions. I don't know, but Tank made it official that he left Mayweather Promotions. But that's a whole different video for another day. Anyways, he lost in 2017 to Anthony Yigit. Sandor Martin has gotten significantly better since that loss. But going into this fight, you know, it is what it is. We've got Tiafimo Lopez returning in the 140-pound weight division to face Sandor Martin, the unknown Spaniard that defeated the four-division champion Mikey Garcia. Boxing community, how do you think Tiafimo Lopez does this weekend in Madison Square Garden against Sandor Martin, El Orgullo de Catalonia, España? Anyways, let me know in the comments section, y'all. This is Hot Boxing Minute. Y'all already know. Um... The other Cobain event on that fight card that's got me intrigued. There's a bunch of prospects fighting on that fight card too. And I don't really want to get too much into the prospects. No offense, but I'm pretty sure they're just going to mow down their competition. This isn't even about that. Um, The Cobain event, Jared Anderson and Jerry Forrest. Oh, Jared Anderson. Many people are picking him to be the next great heavyweight American prospect to become a champion, hopefully, Obviously, I'm going to be biased towards my guy from my gym, Stefan Jabari Shaw. Uh, but this is about Jared Anderson. We're not going to take away from his position right now. Jared Anderson is 12-0. and 0, All 12 of his wins by way of knockout, which makes a lot of sense. When you're 12-0 and 0 in your career, you should be getting a bunch of knockouts and really just making a name for yourself, fighting nondescript dudes. His last two wins came against Oleksandr Teslenko and Milijan Rolf Kanin. I can't even pronounce those names, but... He did get the knockout victory, and he looked rather splendid doing so. Jared Anderson is a young spry, 23 years old. He's 6'4", with a 78.5-inch reach. What can you say about Jared Anderson? He's got power in both hands. He's got very great defense. His defense is interesting because he'll stand right in front of you, catch all your shots, catch, and then shoot return fire. And he has... You know, antifreeze moving through his veins. Jared Anderson is not one to underestimate. That dude is quite a fun prospect to watch. 
He was a sparring partner for Tyson Fury in the buildup to, I believe, the Dillian White fight. And Tyson Fury had nothing but great things to say about Jared Anderson. He said he's likely going to be the next great American heavyweight boxer. His opponent is Jerry Forrest, a very, very, very seasoned journeyman. Jerry Forrest is 34 years old. He's only six foot one with a 78 inch reach, which is only a half inch reach off Jared Anderson. His record is 26 5 and 2. Don't let Jerry Forrest's record of 26 5 and 2 fool you. Now, a lot of people who know Jared Anderson may not be familiar with Jerry Forrest, his opponent, but Jerry Forrest has been a staple in the American heavyweight boxing scene for a while, and he has fought some of the best names in the heavyweight division, including Carlos Takam, Kubrat Pulyev, Michael Hunter twice, and he even got a draw with Jay Li Zhang, Big Bang. So, don't underestimate Jerry Forrest. Um, Jerry Forrest is a southpaw. He is a crafty southpaw. He is a stubborn southpaw. He definitely has enough tools to really, really test Jared Anderson. And this is a fun test for Jared Anderson. You've got top rank kind of building Jared Anderson and Stephen Shaw as the two big potential American heavyweight next elite stars, hopefully. Um you know, Stephen Shaw just got done beating Rydell Booker, a veteran who's like in his 40s. So it wasn't really the best of looks, but he did get the win via decision. His next opponent is going to be Guido Viadello, the former Olympic Ital Italian Olympian who is also undefeated as a heavyweight. And then you've got Jared Anderson fighting Jerry Forrest. So roughly their level of competition is right about where it should be. Um, Jerry Forrest his five losses come against the best of the best. Like I said, he had a losses all by decision. He hasn't been knocked out, mind you. Michael Hunter, Jermaine Franklin, Carlos Takam, Kubrat Pulyev. And he had a draw in a rematch with Michael Hunter and a draw against Zhe Zhang, a.k.a. Big Bang. And he got knocked down quite a few times in that fight against Zhe Li Zhang. He is definitely got some dog in him. Jerry Forrest is not going to lie down. If he does get knocked down, he will get back up. Jerry Forrest, for all of his flaws, I think is a great solid fighter and a great solid test for Jared Anderson. And and uh, Jerry Forrest is not coming to lie down. He is not going to take, he's not here to survive. He is going to fight to try to win. So this is going to be a great matchup for Jared Anderson. As much as I like Jerry Forrest and his awkward kind of southpaw mobility, I'm going to go with Jared Anderson to win. I'm going to say by late stoppage. I think he needs to get that late stoppage in order to make the kind of statement he wants to make. No offense to the cans. I don't want to say cans. To the competition he's fought thus far in his career, but it definitely knocking out people that are far beneath your skill set does not show what you're really capable of. But him knocking out somebody like Jerry Force would be a huge statement to the entire heavyweight division. And I think Jared Anderson will get the stoppage late in the fight or it will go to a decision, a wide unanimous decision in favor of Jerry Forrest. Anyways, boxing community. How do you feel about Jerry Forrest? How do I state this? Okay. We got Jared Anderson, a.k.a. Big Baby. Many people are touting him as the next great American heavyweight fighter. He's going to be facing veteran Jerry Forrest this weekend in a co-main event of the Teofimo Lopez-Sandor-Martin fight out there at Madison Square Garden. Boxing community, how do you think Big Baby Jared Anderson does against the veteran Jerry Forrest? Let me know in the comment section, y'all. Let's chop this up. Leave that comment. Hit that like button if you haven't already done so. This is Hot Boxing Minute, the future of boxing analysis on YouTube and TikTok. Peace.